the election went on. So that gun squashed. The other gun squashed and slack and I got um, some skikers that now had to held the Austin. At the start, Charles Monroe. At the seed of the skikers that now had to get the earnest. Edward George and um, at Chapel, she them scattered at Willie Monroe Nook at Annie Monroe. Yano can choke this lag naya, Yano can choke on this heim naya, ya it's chew up an air. At Naip and Hunak on a can shoot and jar. Heims get up on a two to wheel, Heims can. خايم ده خايم وده أكن عيب يا شخوك ده أكتر هؤيم يا كده دكشيت كن مسكينه لو خايم وشتاق أنت إيه لا تدويه تشتكن هو مسكوك شامخ. My name is Sharon Spinks and my Indian name is Shadatko and my mother's name is Hilda Austin. That's her second marriage and my father is Charles Monroe from Shishka, Siska. And um, and her, uh, my uh, grandparents on my mother's side is uh, Edward George from Vernon and um, Chappelle. My uh, grandparents on my dad's side is William Monroe and uh, Annie Monroe. And uh, I'm f kind of of two bands there from the Shishka or Siska band and my father moved us to to Lytton because there was nine of us, so the the little uh, two-room house is just not big enough. So he moved us to uh, Lytton on a big ranch, and um, we had uh, he um, put out some uh, fruit trees there for us because there's so many of us. There was so many of us, and um, I had to look after my my siblings at that. And uh, we had many aunties and uncles that would that would come by and visit us, and uh, that was always that was always really a happy occasion. And um, yeah, I had I come from a big family. Uh, there are many people. Uh, the number one would be my grandfather on my father's side. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, she was very, um, Chappelle was, was a very strict person, but uh, in my adult years, I could see that, um, that it was because she loved the family so much, she didn't want any harm to come to any family members, so, um, when I began, I began to realize that the reason she was very strict uh, was that uh, she wanted our safety. Our safety uh, was uh, her top priority. And I remember her working and um, so hard, all our grandmothers and grandfathers um, and our parents, they, they worked very, very hard to uh, preserve for the winter. Um, chop wood, and uh, I remember my family, they chopped wood for, for everybody. Uh, not everybody, it's people who are unable to go and cut wood for themselves. They always uh, chopped, and they had that old, that saw, the, oh, one person at the other end, and one, and they, I could hear that, Room, room, room. I remember because I had to come from my house down to where they were chopping wood, cutting wood with lunch, and uh, that's almost—it's like a blessing when I hear that. That room, room, room when they're cutting the wood, and it's—it's um, it's medicine to me. And uh, and my talking to you about this, um, you've all become medicine to me and it's medicine for my soul. And I hope that what I'm sharing with you, it's medicine to you. And it's free.
to, it doesn't cost anything. I remember that's what uh, my uh, grandfather on, on my mother's side said. Don't, um, he said, you know, feel good and feel happy, and it doesn't cost any, we're not asking for anything. And it's just sharing that happiness that is with all of us. That, that's who we are. I remember him saying that. And uh, so I'm hoping that that this philosophy, this teaching, you know, will 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 help you in your lives, and um, and then that's that will never leave you. It it will never. That's I remember my grandfather on my mother's side said that once you learn that to na una kwan chuta kwan chuta una da ya to dada hui klipska aha na huya we a to u a a dixit. From here on in, that is who you are. When you feel that medicine, when you share that medicine, when you say the good words to your neighbor and to your friends and to your family, when you say the good words, that that becomes medicine. It will never leave you. It will help you in your lives. There are many things that, that I've learned uh, from my grandparents on my father's side. and. Uh, and one of them was how to deal with um, uh, things that fall on, on our path, which sometimes are not, um, some of them are devastating. And just to give you an example, um, though I remember, it just come to me, um, we, our family had lost uh, a cat, and uh, that cat and I, I think, grew up together and uh, the cat died. And uh, so I was really devastated. And I, my mother thinks I was about three years old when we lost the cat. <clears throat> and the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is uh, how my grandparents, uh, my grandfather on my father's side showed me by riding on the dirt on the, on the ground. And he drew a circle and um, it is a deep circle, and uh, he said he talked in like a machine. You are feeling sorry right now when he drew that circle, but he drew another circle, and uh, he said, "Talk to me, talk to your parents, talk to your grandmother, and." Um, and then we will become your medicine. It, it won't completely take the hurt and pain away from losing your cat, but talk to us. And then he drew another circle, which is very light. And he said, and he said, uh, And so what, um, my grandfather said was that when he drew the very light circle, he said the, the hurt and pain of losing your cat, uh, it won't totally go away, it, it, but it's part of you, it's part of what makes you a person. And by talking to us, talking to your, your parents, talking to me, what you're doing right now, um, the pain will, will lessen. It, it will be almost like you put it aside and you have to go on with what you're doing today. It's because in the long run, I have used that um, many times in my work uh, with people, uh, especially with the residential school survivors. I've uh, used some of that philosophy that my, grand, my grandfather showed with me, was that there is a way to get around a hurt and pain that, that falls in your path is the way my grandfather uh, taught me, was that there are many things that will fall in your path and there is a way to get around it and by talking to people. And he said, for an example, I was talking to him and, and I quit crying at that time because I, I was just fascinated by listening to him. And right then I could feel that, that 
the medicine that he was talking about was by communicating with other people. And he said, keep on talking to me, talk to your parents, talk to your grandmother, which I did, and um, the pain will lessen. There are many other people. As I go along, there's a teacher who is my role model. When once I learned the English language in grade eight, I was, I felt so alienated going to a public school. I was teased and um, I thought I'd never find peace with myself. But that teacher, Mrs. Nordstrom, she, she really helped me. She helped me through it. She helped me with my work and I continued my work and, um, and my grades went up. And because I was learning um, a different language, which is English, I was able to master it. And um, it felt good by the end of the year I, I was ready to go into grade nine, so that's another uh, role model uh, that I have, uh, my grandfather, and my two grandfathers, and uh, Mrs. Nordstrom. Tlagavn people are, um, we are very humorous people. We're, we're, from as far back as I can remember, uh, I remember adults when my mother said, you couldn't have been more than two years old, but I remember adults talking about uh, talking about a, a horse that uh, that went lame, and they were saying that that he was a lazy horse. So everybody was laughing. And my my mother said, "You couldn't have been more than two years old," which which I probably was. But in the language, in like it is so hilarious that it's very difficult to translate word for word because um, it loses some of the punchline when it gets turned into into English. But I, that's, that's a humor. I brought that up because we are, uh, in Tlaikapan people are very humorous. We're generous people and we're humorous. And uh, in very, very tough times, um, I remember we lost an elder who must have been in late 90s um, and uh, he had suffered but what he had told his his children who were also adults he said I don't want anybody to cry for me don't be sad when I'm gone um, talk about the funny things that happened uh, in our lives is what um, I remember him um, telling his grown-up children. So when he did pass away, there was sorrow, um, but he, the, the son said, no, no. Um, the, the son said, he said that he didn't want anybody to cry for him, to remember all the funny things that happened in his life and in, in anybody's life, anybody that is in contact with them. So that's, that's how we always got around the, the very deep hurt that, that uh, Tlaikavan people have experienced, is um, they used a lot of humor. And um, the other thing that, um, that I remember is that, just a very quick example, um, all the people worked really hard on preserving food. I remember my, um, my parents, uh, we had a uh, garden uh, left, right, and center in our homes. And uh, we would put away a lot of things for the winter. But when people came to visit, my mother always had a box full of dried fish, canned fish, uh, potatoes from the root cellar, uh, carrots from the root cellar, uh, cabbage from the field because uh, in the fall time my parents would dig a trench and they would pick all the cabbage and they would bury them along with the carrots, just bury it deep and put the cabbage upside down so the, the dirt doesn't go in the cabbage. And I remember going down, I, would, I think the trench is about as big as me, and I would put the cabbage in the trench, and uh, then they would bury it. So when people 
came by uh, to visit, um, my parents always told them, uh, stay over, it's too cold or it's too dark. And uh, I remember one time my mother said, it's too dark, the horses won't see. <laughs> but that, there's a humor. You know, well, the horses can, they know where they're going when they go home, but she just wanted them to stay over. So uh, she said, no, no, stay over, and the horses can't see and in the dark time. And uh, so off we would go to get the potatoes and carrots and, and uh, go into the field to dig up some cabbage and we put it in a box for the people to take with them. And I believe that many, uh, many of us, we still do that. We give canned fruit, we give canned, um, salmon. Uh, my children, they'll, they'll give away uh, canned meat, uh, frozen fish. They'd give it to elders or give it to whoever is in need. So that um, tradition is carried on. It's, um, and, and that's wonderful to see. So I don't know if that's a hobby, but that's, that's part of the lifestyle that, that I see happening. And uh, thank you for that question. I believe I do. I, uh, I believe I, I dream in my language uh, because presently I am teaching in Tlaikapmukchin to elementary uh, students uh, or the, the school at Boston Bar. And uh, this September will be going on the third year. So the children, the little children, uh, the kindergarten, well, they're in grade two now. Um, they've mastered the, they can count in, in Tlaikapmukchin up to 40. So uh, that's, that's a real success and I keep praising them and, and telling them you're doing a good job. They, they love learning, uh, uh, saying the animal, the animal names in Tlagabm. So that's what, um, it, it's made fun. You know, the learning in Tlagabm is hard, but um, I tell them, yeah, Shpaj, they all know what Shpaj is, it's bear, you know, and, uh, and Shmua is cougar, you know, they, they just, uh, it's like an immersion into the, in the Tlaikab So, um, um, I, there are times that are, are really challenging, and that's when, um, uh, when I say my prayers at night, I ask, you know, give me a sign that, um, that will help me help the children. So I do, I, the dreams that I have, you know, is very encouraging and it helps me towards uh, what I'm going to do for the children the next day. That is amazing because uh, what I'm telling my children is, my children, I mean my students, um, is the an and it's I am happy. but. The literal translation is, my heart is happy. I am happy. And uh, I keep repeating that and repeating it to the children. So they, they come up to me, you know, so that's good to see. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, yes, ta. You know, when I tell them, no, no, be quiet, chuka, chuka. But the positive words, I think, are, are really important uh, for the uh, for the students and and anybody else. Like uh, when I see children, uh, the daycare go by on our street. They go out for an outing every day. The addiction one one, the addiction, and they all say addiction one one. You know, so that the positive words. You know, I really encourage that. Well, I didn't speak any English until um, I, I had to go to the residential school. So I spoke nothing but in Tlagab, right up to six years old. And um, I learned some English words, but um, for as far back as I can recall, I, I spoke nothing but in Tlagab when I was at home. I spoke in, because my, my parents spoke in Tlagam, my grandparents uh, spoke in Tlagam. So I felt that freedom, you know, of speaking in Tlagam. And um, until 
they took me away to the residential school and then I had to um, I had to not only learn the English language, but uh, I was not allowed to speak in Tlagam. And um, I don't know if this is going to be recorded, but uh, I remember a couple of my friends from the West Fraser. We spoke nothing but in Tlagam. And we were nattering away there in Tlagam, Chin. And, um, and, and we got in trouble. So what we learned, and we never had to do this at home was we learned to be devious. We spoke our language way down the field somewhere, and, uh, or we'd go way, we'd go, if we were allowed to go into town, we'd natter in our language, always coming back up to St. George's School. We just, and I think that's why I maintained my language, was um, we learned how to be devious and speak our Ntlagamkchin behind authoritative backs. And um, we never had to do that. We never had to hide, you know, in, in our growing up years. We were free to do um, whatever, whatever we wanted. It is very difficult uh, because it is totally different um, environment, you know, from the Ntlagatmuk and the happy and the humor that happened. Uh, we, we were always safe. And then the residential school was totally alien to me. Um, I remember going into this big building and it was gray and it felt cold, but the cold went even deeper than, than the warmth. It, it felt alienated. It felt, um, it, as I went along in the grades in the residential school, I identified as it. That's what it felt like. It felt like a jail. When I learned what a jail was, that, that was a feeling that I got. Um, and uh, when I mentioned uh, speaking our language behind authoritative backs, uh, I believe that's what maintained me through that. It sustained me, was knowing that I can go over here and I'll talk to Margaret. I'll go over here and I'll talk to Anne in our language. That is what uh, sustained me uh, through that, uh, the nine years that I was there. And uh, thank you for bringing that up because I want to share, part of it is with the question you asked um, about my grandfather on my dad's side. He said, he sat me down, it was like now, August, and he said, I'm just going to speak in in and then um, and then my grandfather and this really and thank you for asking that question. My grandfather on my uh, my father's side said they're going to grab you by the scuff of your neck and they're going to make you kneel down and they're going to make you pray to I don't know who. But don't ever let them take your spirit away. And I think that's what, that what sustained me because there were many times that I felt so low. My heart felt like it was way down my stomach. I felt like I, felt like I wasn't anybody. And I would remember my grandfather saying, but don't let them take your spirit away. And um, I can't help but, but relay that to my friends who have gone away. And I think that they didn't have the many students that I, um, friends that I've lost through death. Um, I think they didn't have um, a support like I did. And uh, I tried sharing it with them, but it doesn't, it has to come from an, an adult. And, and I think that phrase, when he told me, don't let them take your spirit away, I was able to, to hang on to that. And it helped me the nine years that I was there. But uh, I do really, really appreciate what all of you are doing. And my, my hands go up to all of you here and your teacher that uh, we are moving ahead. We, we are moving ahead. We have, we have conquered many things uh, as a nation because we learned the English language so that we can talk eye to eye with 
whatever decisions has to be made. We, we've learned, mastered the English language, and that is part, the only part of the battle. But right now, what, what you're doing is you are educating yourselves so that you can do what anybody else can do, and you could probably do it better uh, because your heart and soul is going to be in the work that you're going to be doing. And my hands go off to each and every one of you for the work that you're doing and the learning that you're doing. And, um, and I hope that uh, some of my uh, teaching that's handed down to me has been handed over to you for your lives. Yeah, Kukschamu.